How do you find a purpose in life? I'll tell you in a moment. Matt Cook here. I have 700,000 subscribers to my Men Health newsletter. I've been interviewed by ABC News. I've coached tens of thousands of men, including famous athletes, uh, political figures such as uh, congressmen, all kinds of people all over the world. And what I want to tell you about right now is the importance of purpose. And I get a lot of people that'll tell me, Matt, I'm looking for my purpose in life. I don't feel like I have a purpose. I don't feel that my life has any greater meaning. Now, the people that are believers in a higher spiritual being, they generally don't say this as much. But I found that most all men need a purpose in life. And perhaps right now you're not ready to adopt the idea of a God or something like that that gives you spiritual significance, and that's perfectly fine. But I do think that you need purpose and meaning in your life. When I was uh, in elementary school, I remember in science class about the life cycle of a um, butterfly, and it was a cocoon, and then it was a you know, larva thing or pupa, whatever it was. Then it was a butterfly flying around, and then it would lay eggs and die, and then the eggs would, would hatch and the cocoon and, and all that, you know, the whole cycle. And I'm thinking, what's the meaning of it? There's no purpose to that. It's just a butterfly doing its thing. And what I realized is that that's fine for the animals. They don't have to think about a purpose. They are a purpose. I mean, we need butterflies in this world, right? Every animal, every plant, everything has a purpose. I got bitten by a tick a few years ago. I, I took an antibiotic and I didn't get Lyme's disease. I had the little bullseye pattern, but I really was mad about it. And then I thought, you know, let's just say you want to call the universe God, just as a shorthand, whether you believe in a God as, a, as, an, as an old man on a throne or not, okay? I just think everything is God, right? Just bear with me for this for a second. And I said, God is everything, even a tick. Everything is, has a purpose, right? Even that tick has a purpose. If we remove the tick, we don't know what's going to happen. Remember that story, speaking of butterflies, they, they call it the butterfly effect. But there was a Ray Bradbury story where people go back in time and the time machine operator said, you got to walk on this uh, path that we made. You can't deviate. Don't kill anything, even a little bug. You know, they were very careful. So the people get in the, the time machine, they go back in time, as, as I recall, as I'm going by memory. And one of them kills like a, a bug. It may have been a butterfly. I don't know. So he comes back to the time machine and he gets out and everything is completely different. These are like kind of alien land. Everything is different. And it's all because of that one, <laughs> that one bug that was killed. Sometimes the butterfly effect is what they call it sort of a similar idea. Um, so anyway, I don't think that it's, I think the world is much more robust than that. I think it's, it's healing and, and all that. But I think that you need to have a meaning in your life and a purpose in your life, especially as a man, you need to have that purpose. Women are very attracted to a man who has a direction, has a purpose. And there's nothing less attractive than a man who's just wandering around. So by purpose, I generally mean, and everybody means, that you have an idea of where you are and where you're going, like where you want to be. Now in life, there is a series of journeys that we take. We arrive somewhere. It's never the final journey unless, you know, it's the end of our life. There's another journey after that and another journey after that. So it's a series of destinations. But it's the attractive quality and the quality that makes you feel more as a man, what I call a self-realized man, is that quality of always going somewhere, heading somewhere. Now, you're heading towards uh, the airport, and then the road's closed, and you have to take a side tour, and then something happens on that side street that changes everything. Uh, maybe you meet a young woman there, and, you know, all these things happen in life. We have an idea of where we want to be, and we seldom end up that way. We seldom end up where we think we're going to be. And the journey is never what we expect it to be. But it's the idea of having a direction that really counts. And, it, and having a direction actually helps you uh, live longer. You know, I'm a, I'm a health researcher. And I, uh, I, I'm full-time. I spend time, you know, finding out ways that men can live a lot longer and be happier and have a better romantic life and a, and a better life in general. Uh, so this is uh, one of many studies showing a purpose in life is associated with a longer life. They actually surveyed 1,238 people, older people. And they look at who dies and who lives and who's healthy over a five-year period. And there's an enormous difference. The people that have a purpose 
in life. These are people without dementia. They're people with their marbles. These people live much, much longer. We don't even know how much longer because the study was over and these people were still alive. So there's no question that having a purpose, a meaning in your life, can help you live a lot longer and be a lot healthier. That's no question. I'm also saying that it can help you be much more an attractive person and somebody that anybody would want to be with because you're going somewhere, you're headed somewhere. So what if you don't know what a purpose is? The worst possible thing that you can do is worry because you don't feel like you have a purpose. <laughs> if you feel like, oh, I don't have a purpose. I feel terrible. That's really bad. <laughs> and it's better to accept yourself that way. If you're someone, I don't have a purpose. I'm totally fine. I have no purpose. That's fine too. Because actually it's that self-acceptance that can be your purpose. My purpose is in accepting who I am in my life exactly what I am. What stops people from accepting who they are is they continually think that they've got to beat themselves in order to change and improve their present circumstances. They need war and they need destruction and punishment because otherwise they're going to be too complacent. If I accept myself and I'm just happy with who I am, why would I even get out of bed in the morning? Well, I accept myself for who I am and I find myself getting out of bed. I find myself uh, doing health research. I find myself coaching tens of thousands of men and helping you know, numerous couples around the world. I just find myself doing that. I enjoy that. It gives me pleasure, and that's my purpose in life. That's why I'm going to continue doing this till I drop dead at age 120. <laughs> that's my purpose. In other words, I find myself doing things that I'm comfortable, that I enjoy doing, that other people enjoy, and that becomes my purpose. It's in self-acceptance that your purpose can begin. And let me just give you a couple tips on finding a purpose. Tip number one is for men, the idea of a legacy, of what they want to leave when they're gone, can be a key to discovering their purpose. So it could just be that my purpose is having my children grow up to be healthy and happy and have a wonderful life. My purpose is to work at my job and to do uh, help a lot of people, as many people as I can, be a mentor to younger people that come aboard, to be the example for other people, to help the customers of the company. That could be your purpose. Uh, purpose could be that what you do on the time off, you go to, um, to, to Cuba or Africa, and you take trips where you help disadvantaged people in the world, maybe digging wells or teaching in a school or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of things generally, though, they're having to do with your legacy, with where you want to be when it's over, like what you will want to have done. So think about your legacy when it comes to purpose. Tip number two is look at your present way you're making a living as a purpose. Now, if it's not what you really want to do, let's say you're working a retail job and you don't feel like it has a purpose. What is it about your work that you do enjoy, that you love? That is where you could find your purpose. For example, if you really like helping other employees in the store, your purpose may be a leader to other people. So maybe you want to put yourself in a position of leadership for others. And that's your purpose in life, is to cultivate a number of people. In our uh, company, I, I run three companies now, um, we have a purpose. I have a purpose. We bring young people in and we help them realize their dreams and realize themselves as people. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's one of our purposes, really, is, is not just growing our customers, but growing our people, our team, so they can grow. And that gives me great pleasure and gives me a purpose in life to help younger people emerge and develop the, their skills and become amazing people that are working in our business. Tip number three, okay, is to look at your leisure time and decide what it is in your leisure time that you enjoy the most that is mostly most connected with what you would look at as your legacy, with what you would want people to say when you're gone. So maybe in your uh, time off, let's say you like to play um, online games. You might think, well, there's no purpose, Matt, in online games. You know, that's something I want to get out of. Maybe not. Maybe not so fast. Maybe there's something that you enjoy about online games. Maybe you enjoy the sense of winning. You know, maybe you can become a coach to other young people at some point athletic activity or something, and you could help them realize and grow their dreams and become better. Uh, maybe you can change from the online game to something like chess or something that, or some kind of a social activity um, 
that may be like paintball or whatever that's done with, with other people. And then that leads you to having a purpose because you get involved in other people and then you develop something you really enjoy doing and then you end up months from now with, hey, I love this. This is my purpose. This is why I was put here on this earth by God to do this. So it's a process that can evolve. Think of your legacy, what you want people to say about you when you're gone. Think about your work and the things you enjoy most about your work and think about your leisure and what you enjoy most about the leisure and start moving your life to one where you are uh, living with purpose. And that is so incredibly, incredibly attractive to women. Women also are looking at a man when they get close to the man, they use the, the man's scent enters their nose. Women have almost twice as many brain cells dedicated to analyzing scent than men do. Scent is incredibly important to women and to their attraction for a man. Now, if you're a man, you can put on a cologne from a department store, even a $800 to $1,200 cologne that are available now, and it doesn't contain the animalic accords like ambergris, uh, civet, castorium, and deer musk. It doesn't contain the animalic accords that over thousands of years have been shown that women just can't get enough of these on a man. They have different things. They don't have those. And they're not a uh, sense that women really, they may enjoy the scent, but they don't, they're not attracted to a guy wearing them. So what our sponsor did is they developed a scent called an attraction cologne that is loaded with animalic accords that have a history of thousands of years of attraction amongst uh, women and for men. And um, they'll send you a bottle, and it smells so good. It's so good. Oh, my God, it's good. It's fantastic. It gives you more confidence. You feel more assertive as a man, more masculine. And women are really attracted to a guy. They just can't get enough of a guy wearing this scent. It's nothing like any scent that you're going to get today in a department store, whether it's designer or niche or whatever it is. So to get a bottle, here's the thing. A company will just send you a bottle. A full-size trial bottle, not a sample, a full bottle for trial. Just help them out with shipping. And then you get to use it, enjoy it, love it, start experiencing this confidence and romance, and the company will then put the cost of the attraction clone on your card. But if you, for some reason, have to send it back, you just let them know, and then um, they'll let you send it back, and they'll even pay return postage. Now, I, I can't imagine anything more fair than that. So you get to try it all out just for the, the shipping and handling. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And the company does it because they know thousands of men are just loving this attraction clone so much, and they want to get it in as many hands as possible. It is made in the United States. Sadly, it is actually a supplies-limited situation. These compounds, these animalic accords are very expensive, very hard to source. So you really want to click on the link here and get your full-size trial bottle right now, and then let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear your success story as a man with purpose. Matt Cook here. See you in the next video.